Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. In 2 Peter 3.13, we are told that we should be looking forward to the promise of the new heavens and a new earth that are filled with God's righteousness. This is a very interesting aspect of study from God's Word regarding our future home as believers. Join me for part two of the message, The New Heavens and a New Earth. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. New heavens, new earth. Now, new in the sense that it's remodeled, reshaped, reworked, maybe different looking in some level, but I think it's going to have a lot of similarities. You know, like if you get your house remodeled, it's not like you walk into your house and you go, wow, where am I? Well, you recognize it, but it just looks a lot better, okay? So when we talk about a new heaven and a new earth, now I know a lot of times people say, well, what's wrong with the heavens? One thing you need to remember about the heavens is this, Did you know every one of those planets just in our little solar system, every one of them is named after a Greek or a Roman god or goddess? Everyone except Earth. Isn't it interesting that the one we're living on is not? It has the, the biblical view. Whether it's Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Back when I was a kid, Pluto was still a planet. But anyway, you know, it's a dwarf planet now, but got demoted. But I want you to know that, you know, you think about this, they're all named after pagan, Greek, Roman gods. Isn't that sad if you think God makes them and man puts their name on it? That's just the way the devil works, isn't it? I mean, God creates it and the devil wants to place his, get the glory or draw attention to himself. So there's new heavens and there's new earth. And so this earth that we're living on is going to get refashioned. It's been damaged by sin. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse number two, for as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring in your name remain. So again, we're introduced to this term, new heaven, new earth, new heavens, new earth. Now you say, do you believe in global warming, Pastor? Do you believe in global warming? I believe in it so strong. (laughs) I believe in global melting. Because the Bible teaches that there's going to be, the earth is going to melt with the firmament of the heat. So we're talking about this, this new heaven, new earth. Now notice the words of Jesus, Mark chapter 13, verse number 31 Heaven and earth will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. Jesus said that, but my words will not pass away. Everything that we know, atmospheric heavens, outer space, all of this is going to pass away. The earth as we know it is going to pass away, but my words will never pass away. Now, we get a little glimpse again in Romans chapter 8, whenever Paul is writing here in the 8th chapter of Romans, verse number 22, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who had the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption of sons and the redemption of our bodies. But he's talking about all of creation is groaning. There's this yearning. There's this desire. I believe the groaning is looking forward. There's going to be a new heaven. There's going to be a new earth. We see here in Jude, verse number 14. You remember Jude, right? Jude is actually Judas. They call it Jude. They anglicized it. So this is stepbrother to Jesus. And Jude talks about Enoch. Enoch was the one that walked with God and then he was no more. He just walked with the Lord. It's a picture of the rapture of the church and he just got caught up. He was no more. The Bible here talks about Jude. It says, it was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied saying, behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his holy ones to execute judgment on all 
and to convict all the ungodly of their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against. So here you have Jude living back in time, the seventh generation after Adam. I mean, that was a long time ago. But God gave him a preview of the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints, the second advent, God shows him, not the first coming, but he saw the second coming. And God just like dropped a curtain and he starts prophesying what he's seeing ahead. And the Lord's going to come with 10,000 of his saints. And it's just like, wow, the Lord showed me something that was very powerful. God did the same thing here to Isaiah. God showed him there's going to come a time of a new heaven and a new earth to the extent you won't even remember the first earth. It'll all be totally new and it'll all be made new. So here's what happened in Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 8. God did the same thing. Peter's going through and all of a sudden the Lord drops a revelation in his spirit. He sees, no doubt he knows the book of Isaiah and he's familiar with certain things that Isaiah spoke, but God made it very real to him and he's prophesying it out. Second Peter 3 and 8 says, do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward us, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. In the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Notice verse 11. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Amen. We are waiting for new heavens, new earth. Now, if you went up to most people and said, hey, are you waiting for a new heaven and a new earth? Say, brother, I just want to make it to heaven. <laughs> I just want to get into the pearly gates. I just want to, I just want to get there. Well, I think there's a lot of us that think number one goal we're just glad we're there, right? There's more to it. God has a plan that the devil interrupted on this earth, and God's saying, wait a minute, I'm not finished with that. We're going to finish up what I started. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. What promise? But according to his promise, which promise? He must be looking back at Isaiah. He must be looking at these two passages that Isaiah spoke about, about this new heaven in this new earth wherein dwells righteousness. So the new earth will be the old earth restored. There are parts of this nation, there's parts of this earth you can go to and say, wow, this is kind of untouched. It's just beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. This summer, went on vacation up in Branson, and we went to this place, Dogwood Canyon. And I mean, absolutely beautiful. Now, man has actually been up there because we saw him. But I mean, it was <laughs> absolutely beautiful. You take these bicycles and you ride up, and you're just looking around, and you're going, wow, this is beautiful. This is paradise. This is absolutely beautiful. Well, I mean, it is beautiful. But you know, there's other parts that you can go to and you think, this is spectacular. Not everything down here has been impacted by the devil and they're impacted by sin or pollution or, you know, people not taking care of things, stewarding. Well, whatever it looks like now, I'm telling you this new earth that we're going to live in for all eternity it's going to be a thousand, thousand times greater. You don't want to miss out on this, people. You don't want to miss out on this. It's not only are you not in hell, but I'm telling you, you're living 
in a new earth, you're living in the best of the best, just like God wanted it in the very beginning. And we're going to keep reading. See, I get excited, but if I, because it's important to me that y'all have Bible on this. I don't want you to feel like, well, I don't know what about all this. But you see how Peter made reference to a promise and he's pulling back from this Old Testament promise. Okay. Revelations 21, one through six, new heaven and new earth. Now, Revelation 22 is the end of the Bible. So, you know, Revelation 21, we have, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Okay, so the first heaven, the first earth, as we know it, is passed away now. And the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now this is God talking, okay? So when God talks, you need to listen. And here's what God's saying. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away all tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. In other words, the way things used to be is people would have pain, people would have mourning, people would have, you know, disease. All that's passed away. All that has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. So the Lord says, I'm coming, the new Jerusalem. He said, I saw this holy city. What is this? This is the capital city of heaven coming down on the earth. That's just one facet of it. A new heavens, new earth. And he said, the former had passed away. And God said, I'm going to dwell now with my people. So heaven becomes earth and earth becomes heaven. And there you have the Lord with us. And we have this no separation, no angels guarding it anymore. The devil, he's not going to mess it up again, right? So this is it. What about life on this new earth? Now we had men's breakfast and somebody pointed out to me very clearly that it's not going to be a church service 24-7 for all eternity. Thanks for joining me for this message titled, The New Heavens and a New Earth. The new earth that is referred to in scripture is the present earth that we are living on that has been restored and refashioned. For all of eternity, we'll live in our glorified, incorruptible bodies upon this renewed earth that has been redeemed from the curse of sin. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.